Okay, uh, yeah, <laughs> not really. The first person to climb Table Mountain was a Portuguese sailor in 1503. His name was Antonio de Soldana. And he didn't climb the mountain for its beauty or to stretch his legs, he just climbed the mountain because he needed to figure out where on earth he was. Despite what Eurocentric history would have you believe, Antonio de Sardano wasn't the first person up Table Mountain. The Khoi people had lived in the Cape and explored it for hundreds of years before he had arrived. They called Table Mountain Hiriquajo, which means mountain in the sea. Table Mountain is one of the new seven wonders of nature, and it's really easy to understand why. Surrounded by Cape Town and the beautiful Atlantic Ocean, it really is a very picturesque place. The problem is when Cape Townians go up to Joburg and they go to a dinner party, and they start talking about what they think is a very interesting subject, the magnificent hiking trails, the beauty of the mountain, the wonderful views of the ocean, and then people from Joburg say, oh no, that's really boring, that's not an interesting subject. You just snob, you just keep saying things about it. Ascent by a woman up Table Mountain was made in 1797 by Lady Anne Barnard. She was a lively Scottish woman noted for bathing nude in the Fort Fountain. When she made her ascent, she dressed in her husband's trousers and tied her shoes on with tape. Once they got to the top, they had a lavish picnic with cold meats and lashings of Cape wines and port. Before they headed back down, they made sure to have a toast to the king. Hopefully, there's some wine up there for me. <laughs> Table Mountain has been home to a number of people over the years. One of the most interesting characters that have ever lived on the mountain is an American called Joshua Penny. He was press ganged into joining the Royal Navy and when he arrived in the Cape in 1795 on HMS Scepter, he decided to escape. He took some supplies and headed off into the mountains where he lived off wild honey that he managed to collect and dussies that he managed to hunt. His clothes wore off and so he was forced to wear animal skins. After more than a year, Joshua Petty decided to take his chances and head back down and try and get on board a ship. When he came down, the captain saw this fiercely bearded wild man, not completely unlike myself, and he said, What in God's name are you, man or beast? And it was on board that Joshua Petty found out that the HMS Scepter had sunk two weeks after he'd left. He could have come down from the mountain almost a year before he did. Another really interesting ascent story is that of James Holman. He was the first person to ride up Table Mountain on horseback. And what makes the story even more interesting is the fact that Holman was completely blind. He had to be led by his friends, and once they got to the top of the mountain, they rode across with his friends, describing the views to him.
Over the years, Table Mountain has attracted a lot of legends and fables. One of the most interesting is the story of Van Hunks, a Dutch pirate who'd moved to the Cape in search of a quieter life. One day, Van Hunks went up onto the mountain to have a smoke on his pipe. There, he met a cloaked stranger who'd heard about Van Hunks and his pipe smoking. The stranger challenged him to a competition. Who could smoke the most pipe tobacco? Van Hunks didn't back down for a minute. The competition started and soon they were surrounded by clouds of smoke. People in the town could see these massive plumes of smoke coming off the mountain as the competition raged. Eventually, the stranger was forced to give up. He started coughing and as he leaned forward, his cloak fell off. And Van Hunks saw that the person that he'd been battling was the devil himself. Van Hunks had beaten Beelzebub at his own game. Today, when people see cloud coming over the mountain, they say, Van Hunks and the devil are at it again. The number one tourist attraction in South Africa is the Kruger Park, but just behind it in number two is the Table Mountain Cableway. The cableway began in 1926 when a Norwegian engineer called Tryggva Stromso, or at least I think that's how you say his name, he came to the Cape and he said, we're going to build a cableway up this mountain. Since then, millions of people have been able to come up to Table Mountain and enjoy this wonderful view. During the construction of the cableway, the foreman and his wife lived on top of the mountain in a small flat. While they were up here, Mrs. Hendrickse, the foreman's wife, fell pregnant. And when the time came to get, give birth, she decided to have it on the mountain. A midwife came up via a small rope-assisted cable car in order to help give birth. Yvonne Hendrickse was born in 1929, the first person to ever be born on Table Mountain. In 1929, the cableway opened, but unfortunately tourism would take a hit over the following 20 years with the Great Depression and World War II. Eventually, the cableway would pick up steam and become one of Cape Town's biggest and best tourist attractions. Since opening, it has seen many upgrades with restaurants being built and walkways across the mountain. Probably its most famous visitor is King George VI and Queen Elizabeth I, who visited in 1947 with Jan Smuts. You can easily understand why they would have persevered and built a cableway up Table Mountain. This is an amazing view, and one that everyone should be able to enjoy. The mountain stands as one of the great natural beauties of our world. Table Mountain has provided the backdrop for millions of people who have lived in her shadow, living, loving, working, and arguing about the stormers. Table Mountain is the beloved jewel of the Cape. Just don't harp on about it at dinner parties. <laughs> <laughs>